and okay all right so we are now recording um welcome to the alg featured speaker series march presentation um these presentations are from past grantees recent grantees who have uh completed their projects and are presenting on how their projects went how their uh their new newly designed or newly adopted uh course materials are going and uh any challenges that they ran into and so uh, you guys get to hear from past grantees and past grantees get to present on their awesome work. Um, so this month today, we are hearing from Dr. Dolo at Savannah State University on his and Dr. Mucci's uh, course, their college algebra course in the Department of Math. Um, and they adopted an OpenStax textbook for their course. So this will be our first featured speaker presentation that involves an OpenStax textbook, and that was a straight textbook adoption. Um, so I think that we'll have some really great insight into that. If you'd like to go ahead and take it away, Dr. Dola. Okay, well, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, we're happy to share our findings with uh, you guys. And uh, so the title is The Effectiveness of College Algebra Redesign at Savannah State University. And we were just fortunate um, to have received this uh, affordable textbook grant at a time when the USG mandated that we redesign our college algebra code because of its high failure rate. So for some reason, yeah, the grant just came right in time. And uh, so we took advantage of that. And so it's like a two or two stories, the redesign and then the grant. And so as you will see from this um, uh, project, I will have two different abstracts and one for the redesign and then a separate abstract will be for the textbook grant. And those two programs are inseparable. In the end, yeah, do not look at, look at them as two separate things, but just one. Okay, and we are from Savannah State University, and I'll tell you a little bit more about Savannah State University uh, as we continue. Okay, so let me see if this will work here. Let me see if this okay, so the, for the abstract, <clears throat> um, I think we are all familiar with a lot of our curriculum enhancement projects throughout the nation when it comes to college algebra or other math courses. Um, but just very few of them um, um, try to see a joint effect of curriculum redesign with, with technology. And so that's what our project is going to do. Uh, so it said this work compares the effectiveness of course curriculum and course redesign and a traditional instructional method in developing college algebra student mathematics skills. As I said, um, so for the course redesign, we are just going to call that CCSR, and then for the traditional method, it's just going to be TIM. Uh, those will be the acronym that we'll be using. And so the results have shown moderate increase. We did a pilot program, and the results show a moderate increase in student comprehension, and they also drive the. Uh, Theta rate, which was the most important charge given to the committee. And so that's the uh, uh, program I want to share with you guys. Uh, and I would like to give some background information first. Um, so the semester was for 2018 through, four, I mean, spring 2019. And the part of program happened during this, uh, the, these two semesters. And just a little background about Savannah State. So it's historically black university, one of three USG assets university and it's located in Savannah, Georgia. And when we're given a charge to redesign the schools, in, in fall 2018, we had 22 sessions of college algebra. And 
So 648 students were enrolled. And for the pilot program, 93 of the 648 students were enrolled in the pilot program. Okay, and then the following semester, in fall semester, we always have an increase in enrollment. In spring semester, it kind of, you know, reduce. And that's when we have increase in enrollment for pre-calculus because from college algebra, they go to pre-cal. Uh, so in spring, we only have four sessions with 134 students enrolled and six of those students were in the pilot program. Okay. And so the background statistics, so what led to this uh, mandate from USG for, for us to redesign this course? Um, it happened prior to fall 2016. So I think USG must have been looking at all the data from 2015, 2014, and they realized that the university needed to do something about it. So if you look at the data from fall 2016, uh, 1,031 students were enrolled in college algebra, and the failure rate there was 36. If you just consider the Ds and Fs, but if you take into consideration I, incomplete grades, that number jumped to 42%. So it's above the 40 threshold. And then in spring of 2017, the enrollment was 452. And of course, this was by pre-pandemic time. So, uh, and the failure rate uh, in spring of 2017 was 39%. And so based on this, um, we the Department of Math was you know, asked by the Dean of the College of Sciences and Technology to redesign the schools. Um, and so what was the motivation? The motivation there was the high failure rate, okay? And uh, so if you read along there, it says, according to the data from the Mathematical Association of America, 50% of students nationwide do not pass college algebra with a degree of C or better. Um, so even though we're in com good company okay, throughout the nation, but it's a company that you don't want to be in. It's a, it's, yeah. Um, and then the data from our own Office of in Institutional Research at SSU show that college algebra has one of the highest federal rate at Savannah State University. So these are things that prompted um, USG to uh, to give the department three years to improve, to remedy this problem. And not only that, but college algebra is a gateway course. So one of the gateway courses that for retention, for graduation completion, and, and also it, it also happened in the USG momentum year. Okay, so one of the strategies designed to help USG students to see academically in their first year of college. Uh, so the University Department of Math was mandated to remedy this, uh, this problem within three years. Okay, and then the program description, uh, we developed the strategy that was developed, we divide into two phases, phase one, phase two. Phase one was just curriculum changes, okay? We just made few changes to the, um, to the syllabus, and you will see that in just a little bit. It is phase two. Phase two is where the real, you know, implementation happened. And so we'll first talk about the phase, phase one and then get to phase two. And the type of uh, course redesign model that we look at, there are several course design models out there, but we decided to go with what? The replacement model. And the replacement model there, uh, you try to replace, I mean, to reduce some aspect of your course, and then in doing so, you will increase another aspect, give it more time. Okay, and that's the that's model that we use. So replace some in-class lecture time with in-class assignment technology. And the technology part is where the affordable textbook uh, will come in. And then to reduce the number of lecture activities for skill and test preparation activities. Challenges, okay. 
Um, so we are all familiar with these um, stereotypes around the world that math is a difficult um, subject. So it's a worldwide perception. Um, and then after that, different delivery method, teaching style, and sometimes that confuse students. So for example, if a student takes calculus one from you and then goes to another class and take calculus two, um, different style of notation. So sometimes it will confuse students. Um, time constraint. College algebra has a robust syllabus, a lot of topics, but the problem is we have limited time to cover all those materials, okay? Because we have to meet USG standard. Um, okay, and motivation problem was also a challenge. Uh, so the question is, how do you motivate people with that stereotype who, who have already in that system where they know that well, math is difficult? So it's kind of hard to motivate them. And then maybe based on their past um, experience with math, um, they may have gone through a bad experience. So to motivate them, it's also a difficult task. Okay, so these were the challenges. And the component, the component of our, our project, we had a learning component, practice and assessment. For the assessment, we just focus on what tests, exams, or midterm. Okay, we did not consider homework assignment, project, and all the other components to come up with a you know, grading scale. So we just focus on what tests, okay, midterm and assignment and, uh, and final exam. Okay, and then there'll be a te techno uh, technology component of this. This is my open math software. And we decided to adapt this because of the video component to it. And I'll discuss that uh, later on. Um, and then the teacher role is just to teach a big topic. You focus on a big topic and then spend a lot of time in our lab and our in-class assignment activities. Okay, so there were some constraints. <clears throat> so one of the constraints, we devoted two 50 minutes class time. Okay, so two class time, we devoted that to what? In-class assignment and technology. And one 50 minutes period, class period, was also allocated for individual in-class assignment. Okay, so before every, ass every assessment, every test, there'll be three free class period. Two of those will be spent on uh, technology, where the student will go in the lab and they do their homework, finish your homework. And then one class period will be spent on just, you know, in-class assignment, trying to what, develop their skill, and then that way before they can take the test. All right, and then um, the teacher's role again, just to to teach a big topic and then, and then leave the rest with the students. And the assessment prerequisite before every assessment, students were encouraged to well, complete the online assignment before taking the test and then complete all in-class assignment before taking the test. And of course, there was some exception. We have student athletes who will be gone for maybe sometime, few days. So we also took those exception to consideration. And of course, sometimes health emergency, but at least we made the effort for a majority of the students to, you know, meet the prerequisite before they sit for the NTS. Okay, and before we get into the detail of the um, of phase one, uh, this screen is the um, ACMS, which is the USG ball, a vascular ball um, that gave the guideline for college algebra courses through our USG. And they have three components to it. You have review topics, uniform topics throughout the entire state, and there are additional topics that you can choose from. And so for the review topics, we decided to choose these topics that have been highlighted, okay? And then the ones that are not highlighted were the ones that we 
left out because according to USG, 20% of class time must be spent on these or review topics. And then of course, uniform topic, you cannot change anything. So these are standard throughout USG. And then for the additional topics, 10% must be 10% to 50% of class time must be spent on the additional topics. And so we decided to just use the absolute value equations and inequality topic for the 10%. And that's what we use to develop the uh, pilot program. In that way, it will still be what, consistent with our USG policy. So the pilot program also follow what USG guideline based on the standard. Okay, so yes, phase one data. Okay, that's a summary. This is test one summary, test two, test three, test four. So at the time period that we're talking about, Kadesh algebra has four different tests, final exam. So that will be what, five different assessments. Okay, again, we're focusing on just what, test and exam. And I will discuss this table in detail, but that's a summary of then, for example, you will see pilot one. So we have two instructors teaching the pilot program. So one of those instructors was teaching two sessions, pilot one, pilot one. And then the other instructor was teaching one session. And then the traditional method. Okay, so pilot one was also teaching what traditional method in another session. And then for pilot two, you were teaching the traditional session for another one. Okay, and these are the results. For example, test one, um, the first instructor there for pilot, the failure rate was 64%. Pilot two, uh, the first one is 39.3, second one is 64%. Pilot two was 34.5% failure rate. In a traditional session, uh, it's 55% and then 41%. Okay. But let's discuss that in detail. So let's take each test one at a time and then go through it. So for test one, the analysis role right there is the most important one. So the mean failure rate for pilot for the pilot program exceeded the non-pilot program by 2.5%. 2.5 to 5%. And then furthermore, the two part of session met the failure rate expectation of at most 40. Again, the goal, the mandate from the dean was what? Uh, to make the failure rate to drop below 40, 40%. 40 so two of the pilot program met that goal in test one, and the other one was very close, okay? Um, but the, um, okay, uh, the other one did not meet that goal because it was about 64%. Okay. And test two, okay, all three part of session met the failure rate expectation of at most 40, and the numbers were at 21.4%, 36%, 22.2%. .2%. One of the non pilot session met the expectation 35.5%, and then the other one did not for test two. Test three, all three pilot sessions did not meet the failure rate. Okay, it went above 53.5%, 83%, 51.7%, and all two non pilot sessions did not meet the expectation either for test two. I'm test three. And for test four, one part of session met the failure rate expectation, and the other two failed to meet that expectation. And then all two non pilot programs, of course, they did not meet the expectation for test four. For the final exam, all three pilot did not meet the uh, expectation, all two of the non pilot also did not meet the expectation. And then for the grades that were submitted through the university system platform for submitting final semester grade. Okay, remember we are just focusing on what tests and exam. We are not taking into consideration uh, homework, assignments, and um, projects and so forth. 
but in the final analysis there, all three part of program met the failure rate, okay? And then all two non part of program met the failure rate as well, right? When it came to submitting the final grade for the semester. Okay, again, phase one was just what? Tiny little change, which was what? Curriculum, okay? Drop some topics, drop us some topics and see what the result will be. And so what, it was just a minor change. The major change that would now take place in phase two. So phase two analysis, which is the course delivery redesign. Phase one was what? Curriculum redesign. So course delivery redesign is phase two. And so for phase two is where the uh, affordable textbook comes in. And so we have a different abstract for that, just to make a point. And so we'll start with our Randolph and three other guys who wrote a report. They were part of our, a textbook or task force. And in our findings, they survey a lot of students and they found that what 30, 37.1% indicated that what their academic career at some time, at some point, they did not purchase required textbook due to cost. 11.7 indicated that they did not register for a specific course due to high cost of textbook. 7.8 drop out because of textbook. 6.6 .6, earn pro grades as a result of textbook. Cost and then 3.4% indicated that they had taken fewer courses due to what? Textbook cost. Okay, just to you know manage financially. Okay, and only 55.4% always purchase textbook uh, and course material. And this data is very important. Okay. Okay, and then so these are based on the statistic, these traveling statistics will cause anyone to conclude that what one of the factors that contributes to the high failure rate, D and F in college algebra nationwide can be attributed to a high cost of textbook. And noteworthy, um, however, a college algebra redesign initiative at Savannah State University enhanced by the adoption of the no cost affordable textbook grant have helped us to reverse this half failure rate associated with college algebra. And want to share this data with you. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, of course, Math 1111 College Algebra is a gateway course for the science major. And so getting it right will lead to a lot of uh, good things. It will benefit our students because it will lead them to graduate time and all the other benefit that comes with, with that. Okay. And so for the introduction, <clears throat> how did we go about getting this um, specific um, textbook? The grant they enable us to research for the appropriate no cost textbook for our students. And uh, our search yielded to a textbook by Jay Abramson and the information link is given there. And for this particular software, it displays most of the features that we require our students to have. And the good thing is majority of the question, if not all of them, they have a video components to it. So we pick questions that have a video component so that if the students need additional help in knowing how to work the problem, uh, the student was absent in class, can still watch out the video and still know how to work it. So that's one of the reasons why we pick uh, Jay Abramson textbook, because it has all the uh, features that we like and uh, our, our students are also falling in love with it. And so we presented this uh, textbook to the department and they gave us a go ahead to to do this or pilot, okay? So yes, phase two data. So phase two, let's just remember. So we made a curriculum changes and now we are adding what? Delivered 
changes now to it. So it's more re robust now. So for test one, okay, we have just two pilot programs. So pilot one, pilot two, and one traditional this time. Okay, so these are the summary for test one, test two, test three, test four final exam, and the grades are reported at the end of the semester. And we'll take a look at them individually. In the analysis there for test one, okay, the two part of session met the failure rate of at most 40. So it was what, 37% to 29.7%, but the uh, non-pilot, the traditional session failed to meet the uh, expectation, which was about 46%. It's still above the 40%. Test two, the two pilot session met the expectation, but the non-pilot session failed to meet expectation. Test three, the two pilot program did meet the expectation. Um, the non-pilot did not, okay. In test four, both pilot program met the federal rate expectation. Um, the non-pilot did not meet expectation. Final exam, okay. In the final exam, both pilots met expectation. The non-pilot session also met expectation for the final exam. And for the overall semester grade, both pilots met expectation and the non-pilot also met expectation. So, Lesson learns and recommendations. So after looking at all the data, we compile our recommendation. Um, and the recommendations are as follow. We recommend, uh, we strongly recommend the, the um, for institutional reform, okay, which we knew was not gonna happen. And our recommendation was, okay, one of the things that we can do will be what? To increase the credit hour from three to four. So increasing it to four, then there will be what? Four, I mean, three class period for just lecture. And then one class period just for, you know, skill development and technology. And of course, we knew that was not going to work because it would take a lot of, you know, uh, effort. So come up with that because that's why increasing the um, the credit hours for the course, and then we were told that some um, it will run into a USG policy because Scottish algebra should just be for three credit hours. So increasing to four, there will have to be some changes made somewhere, and they were not in a position to do that. Okay. Another recommendation: increase in in a uh, technology facility. Okay, computer labs. Uh, we don't have a lot of computer labs in the math uh, building, so that was one of the recommendations. Um, and then another recommendation, reevaluate test three and test four. These for, yeah, these are hard tests, and those are the ones that have high failure rates. And according to the USG standard, those are uniform topics. Those are the topics that every uh, university is covering so and the results there are not too favorable and and then the other recommendation was about decrease the number of what tests per semester from what four to three and that's the only one that makes sense and so when with all uh, this recommendation so decrease the number of tests from four to three and then we'll use the additional period now to what you know ramp up our in-class activities, our computer activities, and that's what a replacement model, you know, also suggests. And then, so we, pre we presented this to the department and uh, the department agreed with our three tests now instead of four tests. And so with the pre and post course redesign data analysis. And this is very important. So due to the moderate <clears throat> success rate of the pilot program in fall 2018 and spring 2019, the course redesign committee 
strongly recommended and the math department adopted and implemented the committee's recommendation since fall 2019. And the result for DF rates are summarized in the following. So we did semester by semester comparison. For the fall semester, we decided to go with spring 2017 for the pre-redesign time. Okay, For the pre-redesign era, we chose our spring 2017. There were 452 students enrolled. And then the failure rate in our semester was 39%. And then for the post redesign, we went with 20, spring 2020, which had 119 students. And the failure rate with this new program now is about 15%. And that's the spring semester comparison. For the fall semester comparison, okay, we did two pre redesign and then two posts. We went with fall 2016. For 2017, in for 2016, we have 1,031 students, 36% failure rate. For 2017, 727 students enrolled, 24% failure rate. But when it comes to the post redesign error, um, for 2019, 413 students enrolled, 16% failure rate way below the 40 percent that we were mandated or charged to 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 look out for and then for fall 2020 just last semester 389 students 17 percent failure rate so in conclusion the results from phase one and phase two of college algebra redesign show a slight and the moderate increases respectively in student comprehension and engagement. In terms of the course five major assessment tools, the data indicate that on average, the course failure rates decrease. Okay. Okay, decrease by about 5.31% for phase one. And phase two is what we are encouraged by, which is about 34.29% for phase two. So due to the moderate success rate of the pilot program in fall 2018, spring 2019, the course redesign committee recommended to the department and the department has since implemented the committee recommendation. And we are happy to report that as of now, we are still, the, we are, the trend is still going down. We are not sure how long that will continue. And with the pandemic, um, the good thing about you know, the pandemic time is that our students now have this or free software and they can do their homework. The teacher can just assign homework with video component to it and uh, they are able to do it at a distance. So, and so these are some references and um, want to acknowledge two people Actually, one, the first one, round 15 of the Affordable Learning Textbook Transformation Grant. It came in just in time. And yeah, thank you guys for giving us this opportunity. Uh, it gave us the exposure to uh, come up with something that, you know, just tie into what we were doing at that time. And at one point, I was thinking, I said, maybe I think Jeff knew that we were doing redesign, so they gave us this grant for that purpose well. I'm just kidding. But it just came in time. It just came in right in time. And, uh, you guys yeah. had a great proposal. That's what that's what did it. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, but I want to thank you guys for giving us that opportunity. And uh, we also have other courses that we are looking at. And, uh, and we also want to thank the uh, math department. These were people on the committee that helped us to set up the Phase one redesign and phase two redesign. Okay. And are there any questions? I'll get it started while everybody's thinking of it. Okay. Uh, what what 
changes when you move uh, an algebra course from a three credit course to a four credit course that allows faculty and students to dedicate more time? Is it just a scheduling thing because they have to take less? Um, yeah, because uh, from four to, I mean, from three to four, so the faculty is going to be teaching, okay, three credit courses, but it's, He's going to be teaching, he or she will be teaching four credit hours course. So one will be for lecture. I mean, three of those will be just for a classroom lecture. And then on the fourth one is just for a practice, practice, practice. It's like a lab recitation, you know, in graduate school. Yeah, where they just go and just improve on that skill. It can be on the computer. It can just be, you know, skills, skills enhancement. And, but the problem, yeah, the problem with that, um, according to some administration official, um, uh, that, that would mean hiring well, more teachers, okay, because you'll be paying an instructor for four credit hours that used to be what, for three credit hours. And then looking at what, the number of sessions that college algebra gets in a four, for example, sometimes what, 25 different sessions. And and then it reduces in the spring. So yeah, it, uh, they just couldn't go with with that proposal. Yeah, but it it would be yeah if, if if they are going with that, it would have been a, a lot better because in that way, yes, but you can teach three class period and then spend the, the fourth class period just for you know practicing. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah. Do we have any other questions from our audience? This was a great presentation presentation. Thank you. Feel free to turn on your mics or uh, to type in the chat if you have questions. Uh, well, Dr. Dolo, would you uh, would you like to share your um, contact information so that if anyone uh, has questions, they can email you or yeah, sure, sure. Let me um, you can put that in the chat if you would like. And if we don't have any other questions, um, I think we can uh, go ahead and 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 you know say thank you. Thank you so much for uh, presenting with us. Um, thank you for giving us all this additional information. Um, I was I was messaging Jeff um, at one point during the presentation that I I had uh, I hadn't realized when I invited you to present the connections that your project had to so many other things like uh, Complete College Georgia and the Momentum Year and um, all these curriculum changes. And so there's a lot that we can learn from you. Um, and and I also had not considered that uh, Savannah State is an HBCU. And so that is also something, um, you know, so, something else to learn from and, and how these projects affect that. So, um, this was great. This was this was a good pro a good presentation. We've got a couple of people typing in the chat. Okay. It looks like. <clears throat> okay, we have thank you. Yeah, well, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And again, thanks for that that grant, the fifteen round fifteen grant. Yeah, it came in handy. Yeah, yeah, it was we love hearing from these projects um and yeah this was great there's a lot of data here um so thank you thank you so much um right, guys yeah thank you i'll go ahead and stop our recording now